if I can live my life following my values, then I am on the right path. Welcome to Agency for Change, a podcast from Kid Glove that brings you the stories of change makers who are actively working to improve our communities. In every episode, we'll meet with people who are making a lasting impact in the places we call home. Few people are as passionate about helping nonprofits as today's guest, and fewer still are in a more perfect position to do so. As executive director of the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center, she's able to support nonprofits in her hometown, enabling them to continue providing vital assistance to the community. Stay tuned as we discuss how this organization is amplifying the impact of local nonprofits, why fostering a sense of community is so important to the giving sector, and how they're leveraging tourism in Estes Park, Colorado to fuel their efforts. Efforts. Hey everyone, this is Lynn Weinman, President and Chief Strategist at Kid Glove. Welcome to another episode of the Agency for Change podcast. Today's guest is Cato Kraft, Executive Director at the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center, which aims to support, connect, and inspire community nonprofits. Cato, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Lynn. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so looking forward to talking to you because you're in one of my favorite places in the world. And we're going to talk about how you're helping important organizations do important work there. So Cato, let's start out with for our listeners who may not be familiar with the organization. Can you talk a bit about what the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center or the EPNRC for short does (laughs) and how you help nonprofits? Absolutely. Yeah. So the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center or the EPNRC, because it is a mouthful, uh, we are a capacity building organization here in beautiful Estes Park, Colorado. So capacity building is not a very sexy term or (laughs) alluring term to to most people. Uh, But basically what that means is that we help nonprofits in our community give opportunities to support, to connect, and to inspire. So our oh. our main why is we elevate local nonprofit impact. I love that. And you know what? Capacity building may not sound like a sexy term if you're in the for-profit world, but boy, if you're the head of a nonprofit, capacity building is sexy stuff, I think. It, it definitely <laughs> is. <laughs> so Kato, we're going to talk more about the organization, but first I'd really love to hear about you because you are a young woman. You're only 28, but you're already leading this this big organization as its executive director. Can you tell me about your passion for this nonprofit sector and how your career path led you here at such an early age? Yeah, so I I often say that leading the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center is is my proudest passion. Um, I, I moved to Estes Park around five years ago. Fun fact, I was living in Hawaii prior to that on the Big Island. From the beach to the snow. So I was actually in Vail prior to that. So I went mountain to beach and then um, was planning on staying in Hawaii. And my my best friend went away for a couple weeks. And there was this really handsome guy with a beard. And he, (laughs) he looked like he was from Colorado. That was in Hawaii. And we went on a couple dates. Turns out he was on vacation there um, for a couple weeks. And he got the best souvenir of his life when (laughs) he picked me up and I came back to Estes Park with him. So we are now married and that's been wonderful. But I I moved to Estes Park kind of wanting a, a, a life transition. I had previously worked in more like hospitality industry during my early 20s. I, I was a preschool teacher. I worked for a manager wow. company in Hawaii. I worked for the Lions Head Ski School in Vail. And but but prior to that, I, I was working with a camp company that was based in, in Brooklyn that put on academics camps for high school students around the country. And really, I, I felt that my talents are utilized best when I can be creating something, when I can be sustaining change, when there is there is a end product of fulfillment that comes from it. 
So when I moved to Estes Park, I was trying to figure out where my next career move would be. And there was a job opening for a local nonprofit, the Estes Valley Crisis Advocates, which is a, a wonderful team that does victims advocacy work here in Estes Park. So they they operate the only domestic violence shelter here in the Estes Valley. They work with law enforcement to be able to be with with victims of crime or trauma on on scenes. Very very different than the manta ray snorkel work that yeah. I was <laughs> before. Yeah. And when I when I got my position at the Crisis Advocates, I was lucky enough to be joined by a executive director who had previously worked uh, with the Greeley Police Department, and she just brought a wealth of knowledge, but also compassion for me being a a young female in this nonprofit world. And she has actually turned into one of my my biggest advocates, my, my professional mentor. And where I sit today is because of this woman. So I, I, I truly owe so much to this, this woman here. So that's fantastic. (laughs) Kato, I applaud you for being so self-aware at a young age. It feels like you have so much figured out that take many of us quite a lot longer. And it also sounds like you had a great mentor, which I think that's also just a fabulous reminder to everyone to either seek out mentors or to volunteer to be a mentor. So I'm curious as a young leader and as a woman in a position of leadership, what challenges have you faced during your career? I think one of one of the biggest ones that I would say, and and I will just put it out there that I am a white cis woman that grew up in a in a privileged environment. So comparatively to my other BIPOC women or BIPOC men, yeah. um, my struggles are relatively small. Yeah, um, and I I just really want to hold hold space for those community members that have that have had to endure and push through glass ceiling after glass ceiling after yeah. glass ceiling. So- I appreciate that. I think a lot of us are becoming more aware that our challenges maybe are not as challenging as others, right? And and I appreciate that that acknowledgement. But I would say it's it's honestly being young in this field. So the the average age in Estes Park is, I believe now it's 63.7 years old. Oh, I didn't so, realize that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I am I'm quite literally a newborn baby here. Um, <laughs> but you know, there's there's often been this authority that that comes with with age. You know, you're mm-hmm. you you have experienced more, you you have uh, have have more knowledge. And I have been fortunate enough to pack a lot of life in my in my short years. Ah, thus far. Yeah. And I think that I am, I, I also like to consider myself this kind of sponge of knowledge. So I will do these deep dives into situations and subjects that I don't necessarily have a ton of knowledge on, but I, I constantly find myself collecting pieces of education through ex- experiences or anything like that. So I would say being young is, is the is the most difficult part because as soon as someone hears, oh, you're, you're 28, it's, there's this automatic bias that I think comes about because of lack of lived experience. Yeah. Yeah. I love the way you put that. You've packed a lot of life into (laughs) your, into your young years. That's a, that's a good way to, to say it. So I first met you a couple of months ago, you spoke on a panel for the Colorado Nonprofit Association. And I was struck by the fact you mentioned that there are somewhere around 90 nonprofits in and around the Estes Park area, which I, I found shocking. It was quite a bit more than I would have thought. And so I'm curious what do you think it is about the town or or maybe even Colorado in general that makes it so popular for these organizations? Yeah, this is actually one of my like favorite like mouth drop tidbit moments. Yeah. For so Estes Park has a year round population of around 6,500 people. And it's not very many, really. Yeah. And we we are the the gateway town to Rocky Mountain National Park on the on the eastern side. And so we we actually have over a hundred nonprofits that are in service to and in the Estes Valley. That's crazy. So 
when you think about it, you know, we have one nonprofit for every 65 residents. Thank like, you for saying that. I was trying to do the math in my head and I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't sure where the decimal landed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we have a large, a, a large and in charge nonprofit sector, but my favorite part about it is that not one nonprofit in our community is duplicative of, of each other. Wow. Yes. That's cool. And, yes. And naturally our nonprofit sector came about because of the geographic isolation of Estes Park. So for those of you who have been to Rocky Mountain National Park, you have probably driven through Estes Park. It's a beautiful uh, mountain community here, but there's only, during the winter, there's three ways in. They're both, they're all, all of them are through windy mountain canyons. Yeah. And then the way in and out during the summer is Trail Ridge Road, which is through Rocky Mountain National Park. And it's actually the highest and the longest conti continuous paved road in the United States. Wow. So you go up to, you know, 12,500 feet yeah. and it drops you down into the Granby area. So naturally we are isolated from the rest of Larimer mm -hmm. County, the rest of Boulder County. So there is this there's this natural pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality that I think yeah. Estes has adopted. It it was formed, I, I believe it was in the mid 1800s, and this was a pioneering town. Like people yeah. came here to to get away and to yeah. the mountains. So I think naturally our history lends itself to be kind of inward and not yeah. <laughs> yeah. not outside help, which is how our nonprofit sector started. You know, we, in, in years past, there was community members who saw that there was needs within the community and, and community members whose basic needs weren't being met. There was, there was land being bought up by property uh, developers to, to, to build upon it. People were like, oh no, no, wait, we moved to Estes Park for this beautiful land and this view. Let's start a nonprofit to help conserve land. That yeah. is we got our Estes Valley Land Trust. We we saw that there were people uh, dealing with domestic violence and sexual assault. That's how we got the Estes Valley Crisis Advocates. We needed a nonprofit to provide basic needs for our population. So shelter, a food bank, assistance. Yeah. That's how we got Crossroads Ministry of Estes Park. So everything came about because of, of, of a community members uh, seeing that there were needs not being met and the lack of governmental social services that exist in in Estes Park. Yeah. I I love that. I I mean, I don't love the fact that you're kind of landlocked or separated in some cases, right? But I I love the fact that the community is seeing the needs, nonprofits are taking care of the needs that's so often what our nonprofits do for us, right? And then you're the resource for the nonprofits who are taking care of the people. And I think that's fantastic. Kata, when this episode first airs in January of 2023, you are going to be getting ready for a big and fun event. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that event? I would love to. Thank you so much for asking, Lynn. So yeah. the EPNRC will be celebrating 20 years of being a nonprofit and serving the nonprofit sector. Thank you. In in Estes Park, we were uh, formed in 2003, and a little fun fun uh, fact is that EPNRC has been continually led by a female executive director since its its inception. Wow! So yeah, so in order to celebrate our female lineage, our 20 years. We have decided to throw our annual fundraiser, um, which is always a costumed themed event in the middle of winter. It's, it's always super fun. It's always super cold, but people people bear it and come out. And this year, we will be doing a Queen's Ball celebrating Ooh. 20 years of, of the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center. So that's going to be on Saturday, January 28th. And the historic Stanley Hotel will be hosting this event. So we're super excited to have this fabulous and philanthropic, truly fun raiser and yeah. fun. Yeah. fun. <laughs> and we were also lucky enough to be chosen by the American Fundraising Foundation, and they will be partnering with us on some fabulous around the world trips for us to auction off. Wow. So 
we're very excited. Uh, we've already gotten some calls from people saying, you know, what do I dress up as for yes. a fall? And we tell people you can be anything from uh, Freddie Mercury to Queen Elizabeth <laughs> to Queen Latifah to the the Evil Queen. So we're going to see some really cool costumes. Um, and then there's a a dance party for only $15 at, at the end of the event. So we can hopefully bring in our next generation of philanthropists to be able to participate in a Fantastic. great event and not break the bank. And you know what? I cannot think of a better place to have the Queen's Ball than the Stanley Hotel. So I think that all sounds fantastic. And Cato, do you have your costume? I do actually, ah. you know, when this airs, we'll be close enough. So it's fine. I am actually okay. going to get a, you know, a traditional like tool gown and pin the names of all of our different nonprofits on it. Oh, so I can be the, the nonprofit queen. The nonprofit queen. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Well, I am trying to work my schedule so I can be there because it sounds like a lot of fun. Also, though, supporting a great cause, which I think is, you know, not to be forgotten and kind of to dig more into the organization, Cato, your website describes your work as elevating local nonprofit impact. I mean, going back to that capacity building statement, how does that actually look in practice for you? What what are the services that you, that you do? So this actually, this question comes at a very wonderful time because I actually just left our full day 2023 program planning retreat nice. that I staff this morning. <laughs> so this is fresh in my mind. <laughs> but we base everything we do off of these three categories in our mission, and that is to support, to connect, and to inspire local nonprofits. So nice. every program we put on must fall in one of those categories and the outcome of, of those programs must work towards elevating local nonprofit impact. That's kind of our organizational checks and balances that we yeah. do. We are planning really great educational opportunities for our nonprofit sector. You know, something about being in a remote place in, in Colorado means that the traditional uh, conferences and high High class speakers are usually in more metropolitan areas, which means that nonprofits have to leave their office, drive yeah. two plus hours, sit in traffic, get get reimbursed uh, for mileage. So the EP EPNRC is actually able to bring speakers like that up to make sure that that the sector stays informed and within best practice educational models. Something very exciting that happened in 2022 is that we were able to get a completely community, like grassroots funded by the community, diversity equity coordinator. Mm. So when I first started here, I, I went around and met with all of our nonprofits and, and community stakeholders and governments and all that. And I asked them, what is something that your nonprofit needs or your organization needs right. that is not currently being met? And overwhelmingly, it was a authentic connection to our diverse populations. Wow. Estes Park it ha it is has a, a very rich culture of different populations. You know, we are we are a, a dream retirement town for some people. We are the place that people come to year after year af after year for vacations. We have J-1 visa students. We have a thriving population of people that identify as Hispanic, of Nepalese, of Ukrainian. I mean, we we are a, a diverse community, not as, as diverse as, you know, larger communities, but for, for a community of 6,500 people, yes, there's, yes. there's all different sects of socioeconomic classes to colors of skin to religions. One of the things that that nonprofits have continually found difficult is is creating those authentic connections to our diverse populations without it being via services needed. Yeah. So just getting getting these people on on our board of directors, having their their input be heard and be respected and be implemented. One of the things that we did was we were able to uh, grassroots fund this this position, and we we, we had a hundred percent funding that came from community members who were also interested in this program. So in July of 2022, um, I was able to hire 
Gina Duran, who is our diversity equity coordinator. She is absolutely incredible. And she's been doing this, this type of work for, I mean, this is her, her life. Like she, she, yeah. she has lived it. She, she breathes it, but she will be working with our board because the nonprofit resource center often calls ourselves the, the test kitchen or the Guinea pig. I love it. Or for nonprofit programming. So we like to try everything out that no one else wants to try because it could be a major flop and we eat the costs, or it could be so wildly successful that, that we then replicate for the, the nonprofit. So yeah. Gina is going to be working with the EPNRC's board of directors beginning in June to do a year-long diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging um, audit for our board of directors and create this policy manual that foundationally challenges who traditionally sits on small nonprofit town boards. And our hope is that once our board goes through this, this year long process that we can hand this, this beautifully wrapped package yeah. of, and questions to ask and classes to attend to our town board, to our county board, to the other 99 nonprofit Nonprofit. Boards. That's a lot of nonprofit boards yes. in your, <laughs> honestly, almost every person has to serve on two boards to make that all work out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love the way you look at that. And I can completely see where having this coordinator would be of such value to nonprofits. I also, Cato, I I respect the fact that you have these guiding principles of support, connect, and inspire, because I think one thing we see in the nonprofit world is sometimes nonprofits and associations and resource centers can get spread too thin. And when you have your lanes and you know you're going to stay in your lanes in service to your stakeholders, then you can be strong in those lanes. And I'm sure you get pulled thin anyway, because it's just the nature of who we are as we work in this field, right? But I, I like the way that you really speak to that. So I'm curious, are there any other kinds of resources you provide to nonprofits that you want to share? And can you give me any insight into how this work is impacting some of the organizations that you serve? Yeah, so we have a couple of core programs that that have just been standing programs of the Nonprofit Resource Center, one of them being our Partnership Network monthly meeting. And that is quite literally a round table. We all gather in a circle and we we go around to hear, you know, what what has happened in your organization over the last month? Yeah. What high fives do you have? Like what has been going really great? What do you need some help on? What, what programs are happening? Do you have any volunteer opportunities? And then we, we, we usually get between 20 and 25 local nonprofits there to give us updates. And, and my wonderful marketing uh, coordinator will actually take all that information and turn it into a newspaper article to inform our community. Estes Park is is interesting where we are a newspaper and a Facebook town. So it's <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying, right? And that's what I love about that is you know what works yes. and you use it, right? And and I do think different local markets have different different things that they lean into. But I yeah. I think that also kind of goes with you mentioned an average age in the 60s. I think those two things kind of work in that arena as well. And you're not a market that's large enough to have your own television station. So, you know, any money spent on television would be mostly wasted in other areas as well. Yeah. I actually think one of my most proud programs uh, that, that we have fully developed since I have started um, is a giving guest program. Oh, and yeah. That is, that is a collaborative between the SS Park Nonprofit Resource Center, United Way of Larimer County, and the Estes Chamber of Commerce. And basically what it does is that it it utilizes the tourism economy that Estes Park thrives off of. We get yeah. anywhere from 4.6 to 8 million visitors per year that come through Estes Park. And Estes Park is, it has a generational tourism market. We have 
grandparents who have brought their kids, who now bring their kids, who now bring their kids every single year. Okay. They I'm guilty of that. I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I came with my grandparents and now I will soon bring, I've, I've already brought my kids and their significant others. And soon I will be bringing my own grandchildren. So I, <laughs> yes, I'm raising my hand, raising my hand. <laughs> and you know, it's, it is, it's such a wonderful thing to see how much pride people have in Estes Park, especially as a vacation spot. You know, th yeah. this is, this community could be where your grandchild takes their first steps, right. where your child had their first ice cream cone on Elkhorn Avenue. Probably you, the first place they'll see an elk as they meander yes. by the golf course, right? Yes, exactly. So, you know, our our guests, as as we like to call them, not not tourists, you know, yeah. they they have a, immense pride coming to our community. And that's why they keep coming year after year. Yeah. But something that our nonprofits deal with is that there's a pillow tax, which guests pay, and, and that helps fund our local marketing district. Mm -hmm. There's a sales tax that guests pay that helps fund our town government. And mm -hmm. then there's mill levies on, on top of that to help fund our school districts and our fire department, all very, very, very worthy causes to fund, but nonprofits don't have any type of tax yeah. that they could benefit off from guests coming into the place where we, we live year round. So we actually developed this giving guest program in order to tap into this economic resource that nonprofits usually don't have the capacity to tap into. And our slogan is give to the place you love to stay and play. Yeah. And you are able to select six sectors of nonprofits since Having a list of a hundred nonprofits, people would it is a get little to, overwhelming. <laughs> yes. You would get to, to E and there's 40 Estes Park this, Estes Valley that. So we have actually asked our nonprofits to self-identify under one of these six categories. Mm -hmm. So let's say you, Lynn, you have a huge passion for childcare. I do. And yes. And and that like that is your passion back in. Uh, Nebraska, like you, you give your heart and your soul to this and you come to Estes Park and you are talking to a waiter and he says that, you know, he, he actually has, has to, to quit next week because there's only two infant spots here in, in yeah. Estes. Park. Oh, That's okay. a real problem actually, right? It is. Yeah. Yes. So through this program, you can scan this very easy QR code, go to epgivingguest.org, and you can click, I would like to give towards youth and families. Mm. So you give $100, let's say, and there's 10 nonprofits that are under that realm. And that money at the end of each six-month giving guest season will be equitably dispersed to those nonprofits without having any type of grant ask. That yeah. that was a big thing that I wanted to make sure was that our nonprofits don't have yet another way to, ask. to fill out or yes. measurement to supply. Like sometimes that measurement is harder than the work itself, right? You just have mm -hmm. people tracking data, tracking data. That's such a fantastic idea, Cato. Yeah, so we we were actually able to launch that this past summer, and unfortunately, it didn't do monetarily as well as as we thought it would. But this is a program that give this it is time. Sometimes it just takes yes. a little time because, in some ways, you're you're hoping the the hospitality workers and representatives need to take a part in getting the word out on this. And they are, they themselves are, I'm sure have plenty of things they have to do. I would say, give it, give it time. Sometimes adoption just takes a little, a little while. It's yes, a really great idea. Thank you. And this is, this is going to become one of our core programs. We are not going to give up on this program. Good for you. It literally hits all of our boxes as to support, to connect, to inspire, to elevate local nonprofit impact. And this is a soapbox that I will stand on for the rest of my life is that we have too many talented executive directors in this town that are passionate and so good at working towards the missions in which they serve. And yet so much of their time is spent looking for the next dollar or trying to cultivate a donor that yeah. their, their expertise is being taken away from the critical missions that they serve. So if 
if EPNRC, as, as their local nonprofit resource center working to elevate their impact, can step in and take that burden off of them, you know, even if we got $1 from yeah. every tourist or guest <laughs> that, that comes into Estes Park, we could fundamentally change how our nonprofit sector yeah is funded. And we have not been able to find any other community doing something like this. I've so, never heard of it. And, yeah. <laughs> and I spend a lot of my time doing nonprofit marketing. I think it's just such a good idea. It's going to, it's going to take off. Yes, you and I'll have a cocktail. <laughs> we'll talk it through. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Cato, I love I love the idea of that program. So innovative, so passionate. You know, also makes a lot of sense for the area that you're in. I I completely agree with you. I love to visit Estes Park and, and have that same level of pride and look forward to bringing my family back and and talk very fondly of a, a lifetime of memories too. You know, you have mentioned the word community several times, not surprising, like community is really important to the nonprofit work, but I'm curious your opinion on why it's so important to foster a sense of community instead of competition in this nonprofit world. The, the $10 million question, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I firmly believe that especially in small communities, there is this there's this natural aversion to being fully collaborative because you know we, we are all sharing the same pool of donors. Yeah. We're all sharing the same local grants. There's it's not very often that our community nonprofits go way outside of the realm of Colorado or even federal funding that's pigeonholed for, for certain missions. So there's, there's this apprehension just naturally from, from being able to be truly collaborative and, and open. One of my mottos in life is community over competition. And that yeah. is because we, we need to create this, this community both within the the partnership of nonprofits to um, people that receive those services, there like there's there's so many layers to this. Yeah. You know, I would say that the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center has that at our very core, and that is we are here to to foster this this community, to uphold this community of nonprofits, to speak for the community of nonprofits when when hard conversations need to be had with with government entities mm -hmm. or with businesses. We all work stronger together. And for sure. yeah. And even if, you know, sometimes there's there's this fear of are we stepping on each other's toes? What if I go after this donor? You know, at, at the end of the day, yes, we all need money to make our missions happen. But we get into the work we do because we are trying to leave a better community yeah. for the next generation. And how that's really going to be accomplished is not by competing with each other. It's it's going to be having this strong sense of, of pride within our nonprofits, within our missions, within the SS Park community. Our vision is actually strong nonprofits, strong community. That is yeah. the bylaws. Like the EPNRC has this overarching just theme of in order to create a strong and vibrant community, you must have strong and vibrant nonprofits. Absolutely. Here, here, Cato. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. I love it. I love it. So you're doing so many great things. You've got this great history. You've got a great event. You've got great programs. What's left to do? What do you see for the uh, EPNRC in the next five to 10 years? I think we're truly going to level up as an organization. You know, wow. I I have often said that we are the the chamber of nonprofits. Like yeah. we are we are this this microcosm of very heavily diluted nonprofit sector. Yeah. And it's it's unusual for a small community to have a dedicated nonprofit resource center. Most of those lie at the state level, at the county level. So our work, as in what we're doing, is in and of itself a little bit puzzling to think about. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so rare, but I I really feel like the organization can take the next step into a advocacy role. You know, we, we can be the ones informing our nonprofits about what's happening at the at the state level, at the county level, at the town level with with different bills and taxes and um, and 
educating our nonprofit sector about how how can you advocate as a right. civic engagement is important and it's especially important for our our BIPOC community members, non-profiteers to get out there, to get their voices heard, to to represent those who they are serving. I have big hopes for this amazing giving guest program. I think this this could truly be transformative for this large nonprofit community once it's successful. And honestly, I'm just, I'm really proud about the collaborations that EPNRC works with, we we work very closely with the town of Estes Park, with the Estes Park Marketing District, with our Chamber of Commerce, with our Economic Economic Development Center. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wonderful to have to have these higher level conversations and for our nonprofit sector to not only be seen as the fluffy, nice and, and good work, but as a true economic sector in the Estes Valley. We have millions upon millions upon millions of dollars coming into this community, either via nonprofit donations, via nonprofit people who are uh, volunteering yeah. and, and those hours are being used for match funds for grants. We have a, a, a huge workforce that is nonprofits. So the nonprofit sector here is not just your your typical right. social service entities. It is truly its own vibrant and very successful economic sector here. Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes people, it's a misnomer of nonprofits. People forget that there is an economic impact. There is a workforce. There is, there are budgets that must be met, payrolls that must be made, you know, uh, so sometimes people forget about that aspect. And I, I think it's great that if you're there supporting all of that work. I mean, just doing the math in my head once again, which is not my specialty. I'm a marketing <laughs> person, not a math person. But, you know, if you think about it, in a community of 6,500 people, there's roughly 100 nonprofits and they all employ probably somewhere between two and 20 people. That's a huge segment of the population there just on its own as as part of the workforce there as well so and we have we have very large nonprofits like uh the YMCA of the Rockies oh where, yeah where they have their their own core team and then they they bring in seasonal workers yeah. then we have our very very tiny nonprofits that is one person running this yeah. as as a a volunteer basis and and the SS Park Nonprofit Resource Center and, and why I think I am so just incredibly proud and passionate of, of, about this organization is that we serve them all. It, it doesn't matter yeah. if it's a, a $100 million budget or if it's a $5,000 per year, completely small yeah. basis. You know, we will help serve you in order to to create and sustain a vibrant nonprofit sector here. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cato, I'm uh, obviously you do a lot of inspiring work. You're very passionate about it. I'm going to segue here to one of my favorite questions because people who know me know that I love motivational quotes. Mm -hmm. And I on this podcast have the opportunity to talk to so many you know, inspiring, passionate people. So I'm wondering if you could give us a few of your own words of wisdom to inspire our listeners. Yes. Um, what's, what's very funny, Lynn, is that in my office right now, there is a signed Jim Carrey headshot, which <laughs> he ended up mailing us because I, I asked him for a donation and and we got this, which is fabulous, but it says, thank you very much. And that is what's standing <laughs> at me. And <laughs> not that, that is my, my motive, but <laughs> it's literally a, a headshot of Jim Carrey saying, thank you very much. So thank you very much. I anyways. And, and for people who don't know, I mean, Jim Carrey's kind of famously tied to the town through the Stanley Hotel and the movie yes. Dumb and Dumber, which was was partially filmed in the area. Yes, and and my personal favorite movie. So this was very <laughs> exciting. To me, but I love. I it. digress. I <laughs> love know, it. I love it. Something that that was told to me um, by a a dear colleague and friend recently was live your values. Oh yeah. And that really struck home because a I had never thought about what my own personal values are. Right. I, I don't. 
not something that people intrinsically sit down and say, I like my values are X, Y, and Z. So I, I, I was really able to sit down and kind of think like, what, what are my values in life? And one of them that I have been able to identify and and truly start living my life by is passion. Mm, I, yeah. I am a very passionate person, obviously, when it comes to things that I enjoy and I'm passionate about. But even just as a individual, like I yeah. I like to feel fully. I like to be immersed. I yeah. I love experiencing life mm-hmm. in its fullest extent. So that that quote of live your values has just really s- sat with me. I think I will know when my time at the EPNRC is up. And that yeah. is when I'm no longer passionate about it. Obviously, that's not the case right now. I have No, it's not. <laughs> but if I can live my life following my values and self-checking with myself of, you know, is, is this something that aligns with my values? Then I am on the right path. That would be mine. (laughs) That's fantastic. I love it. And I am going to say, this is only, I think this is only the third time I've ever spoken with you, but I think that's what caused me what to want to come up and meet you in the first place. Cause I could feel your passion when you spoke of the work that you were doing. So Cato, how can people find out more about the EPNRC? Yeah. So we have a really fabulous website, which is all due to my fabulous marketing coordinator. She is wonderful. Yay for the marketing people, right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I truly don't know what I would do without my staff. I, I I have an amazing operations director that's been with the organization for seven mm. years. She's seen three executive directors, a lot of change in the organization. She is wonderful. I have a marketing coordinator who just, I, I, I can tell her, I want something with ant, uh, with elk antlers and that green <laughs> and that like kind of has this like Alphonse Muka vibe to it. And she, she gets it. Me. She yes, gets like, you. She gets yeah. It. And yeah. then I have our fit, our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful DEC court or our, mm. our, diversity, our diversity engagement coordinator. Yeah. But we, we have a awesome website. It's www.epnonprofit.org. That's free nonprofit.org. We'll link to it in the show notes for anybody who wants to go onto the kid glove website and grab that too. Oh, thank you. And you know, that's, that's where you can see about our local nonprofit sector. There's an entire list of nonprofits. Again, once you get to E your eyes kind of glaze over. (laughs) It also gives you updates about some of the really awesome events we do in town. We actually host the Estes Valley National Philanthropy Day. And that is a community gathering. It's kind of like nonprofit prom meets state nice. of the union. We get 300 community members that come out in, in November and we celebrate the amazing work that's happening with our nonprofits, with our philanthropists and with amazing volunteers. And it is truly a feel good event. There's, there's photos on there. We, we also talk about, you know, all of our different types of, of programming. So I, I obviously talked about a couple of our programs. We, we have an entire list of how, what programs we're doing to help connect, support, and inspire our nonprofit sector. So uh. I invite you to go on there. There does happen to be a big donate now button because we are a nonprofit and it is. Of course, it would be irresponsible (laughs) of you not to put that there. Exactly. There's information about the giving guest program as well. There is. Yeah. And there's, there's actually a entire toolkit for both nonprofits and businesses who who need to know, you know, what do I need to do to be a part of this program? How do I implement this program? I need words. And we, we give you all the words. Good for um, and you. it's it's just yeah it's really wonderful that's fantastic so Cato as we wrap up this very fun conversation today what is the most important thing you would like our listeners to remember about the work that you're doing I think I'm going to go back to our vision statement and that is strong nonprofit strong community yeah. I encourage everyone no matter where you're living to try to find a nonprofit organization that is doing something that align with with your values, something that you are passionate about and get involved. Our nonprofits so often, you know, we are we are usually small budgets. We we have staff that are not adequately paid and that's just kind of across the nation. There's there's this 
yeah. underpayment for nonprofit workers. Um, we don't get a, a lot of perks and frills at, as a nonprofit employee. Um, there's this moniker that people say where, you know, you don't get into nonprofits to make the big bucks. I would like to challenge that and say, <laughs> we should make the big bucks. But, you know, nonprofits rely on community donors. We rely on volunteers. We truly rely on advocates to be out there on our behalf as as we're doing these these critical services, these these missions in our communities. We need people who are out there saying, hey, did you know about the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center? Here's what they do. We cannot do the work we do without our community support. Yeah. Uh, and I, I feel so lucky that we are uh, that we are in this very strange little snow globe bubble of nonprofitness. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> the snow globe bubble of nonprofitness. That's my favorite quote of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's 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 wonderful. And I I truly believe that when you have a strong nonprofit sector that is being supported, that is having their, their needs met, that their morale is high because they know that, that they matter in this community, that's when your strong community emerges. Ah, that's so fantastic. Cato, uh, this has been such a fun conversation. I, I have to say, I fully believe the world needs more people like you, more <laughs> organizations like the Estes Park Nonprofit Resource Center. And since you brought it up earlier, I'm just going to say spank you very much. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We hope you enjoyed today's Agency for Change podcast. To hear all our interviews with those who are making a positive change in our communities or to nominate a changemaker you'd love to hear from, visit kidglove.com at K-I-D-G-L-O-V.com to get in touch. As always, if you like what you've heard today, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.